There's a lot of panic in the SEO world about this. I'm going to start it off with what Ahrefs, one of the top SEO tools, just posted on X. Ahrefs said, Google just capped SERPs at 10 results. That means no more 100 result pages. This change affects every SEO rank tracker, including Ahrefs. Here's what you need to know. Rankings beyond the top 10 will show inconsistencies. We're still receiving updates for many keywords, but disruptions are expected. Longer term, Google's update restricts access to deeper results. We can't make any guarantees going forward, but we're actively investigating options and we'll share clear next steps soon. We know deeper rankings matter. They help you spot early progress, catch cannibalization, and find new opportunities. We'll do everything we can to keep visibility available and maintain top class SEO data. Search keeps shifting fast, especially with AI. This won't be the last curveball, but our focus stays the same, giving you clarity and confidence to make your business discoverable where it matters most. And people have been having impressions drop dramatically on Google Search Console. This was shared by Chris Long on LinkedIn. He said, if you see a huge drop in impressions, don't panic. A change to Google's results is causing chaos in Search Console data and rank tracking. Last week, Barry Schwartz reported that Google was testing dropping support for the and num equals 100 parameter. You could append this parameter to the end of any search result to 100 results at once. It was pretty useful for analyzing a lot of URLs for a given SERP at one time. Well, it turns out it's had much larger applications than one-time analysis. Over the weekend, Brody Clark reported that many Google Search Console profiles were experiencing a common trend. They were seeing significant drops in impressions, but an increasing ranking position at the same time. Turns out many rank trackers and scrapers use the and num equals 100 parameter in order to ingest a lot of SERP data at one time. The change has basically broken many of these tools that relied on this parameter in order for them to scrape the Google results at scale. This is resulting in two different outcomes. One, Search Console data is highly impacted. Now we're seeing impressions and associated ranking positions of these tools get weaned out in Google Search Console. Two, ranking tracking tools are broken. Since they can't use this parameter, many of them have stopped functioning over the weekend. And that was last weekend, by the way. But this is still, people are still figuring out what the deal is with this change and how it's going to apply going forward. And that's what I'm going to share next. But this LinkedIn post finishes. If you're seeing that impressions took a nosedive, ranking position went up, but clicks remain stable, this is likely what's happening to you. Now your search console should be more reflective about what people are actually searching. What's absolutely fascinating is that this shows the scale of ranking tracking tools and how much they were influencing our data. In the profiles I'm looking at, some of them are down as much as 50% in terms of impressions. That is not a negligible part of traffic. These scrapers were so active that they were highly influencing the numbers we report on. And then somebody shared that Ahrefs post that I started this episode with on the search engine optimization subreddit and said, what are the implications of this for the rest of SEO tools and SEO in general? So this is the SEO community weighing in now. This is what nightmares are made of. We genuinely rely on the 30 to 50 window because it's quick to spot potential winners, especially with long tail keywords. This gives me actual anxiety. I don't want to spend more on paid ads. Somebody else, there is no reliable way for scripts or automated tools to preserve the location preference of your search and look at past the first page, which is what Ahrefs and other tools depend on. I suspect Google disabled num equals 100 to prevent AI companies from crawling its index. That's interesting. Somebody else, Google just made it 10 times more expensive. Instead of sending one request for all 10 pages, they now have to send 10 requests, one per page. It increases the cost of crawling. Prior to this point, you could extract 100 results in one crawl. Now it's 10 crawls to get the same results. Scale that out across millions of queries and the cost to the tool provider is significantly more to deliver that same data. Joy Hawkins commented, Joy Hawkins, who was on this podcast very recently, just a few days ago. Joy was on episode 804, Local SEO in 2025. That was a great episode. And Joy said, I am worried this is going to be terrible for the accuracy of Ahrefs. The top 10 results only tell you so much. I often use Ahrefs to measure how bigger sites are doing with algorithm updates. 
The charts are bound to be way more swingy if it only includes the top 10. Some positivity from the legendary weblinker who I always share on this show, Weblinker says, there's no implication for SEO in general. Basically, SEO stays the same. And I actually agree with that. It's going to be a little bit harder to get some data. But for, for my method of SEO, I really, I look most at the top 10 results. And I try to see, are the results targeting the query properly? Is there high domain authorities or low domain authorities in the results? What do the, what do the actual pages look like? Are they thin or are they good? And I basically use those three questions along with the search volume of a keyword to decide whether or not I should go after it. But the actual way to target keywords, that is not changing. Take your keyword, put it at the beginning of your page title, the beginning of your URL slug, the beginning of your meta description, the beginning of your H1, and the beginning of the first sentence of your page. And if you do those things, you're gonna optimize your page really well for the keywords that you care about, for the search terms that you care about. And then try to find search terms that are actually going to bring conversions, that are actually going to bring customers, users, warm leads, that are actually gonna bring that stuff. If you wanna learn more about this specific technique of SEO, this is what my 13 and a half hour SEO course, Compact Keywords, is about. Compact Keywords is step-by-step -step how to actually do this for your website. And if you're setting up a site, then how to set up a site and structure it for these conversion-based SEO landing pages. I'm going to finish with a few more comments in this post on the SEO subreddit. Somebody said, I think it's also fallout from the antitrust ruling. I covered that on episode 791 of this show, Google Escapes Chrome Breakup, what the antitrust ruling means for SEO. This person says they have to provide certain search data to qualified competitors, but they are allowed to charge for it. The data they have to release does not include any actual indexing. But why not just package it all? Just got to hamstring the competition first. Another comment, to get the top 100 for a keyword, hrefs would have to scrape 10 times instead of a single fetch. This means more computing costs, more bandwidth consumption, etc. Basically, their business costs a lot more now. SEMrush, for example, has 27.3 billion keywords. As a simplification, to get the top 100 positions for each keyword, they'd have to fetch from Google 273 billion times per month. Oh my gosh. Somebody else. I would be curious to hear how SEOs are pivoting their tracking and reporting strategies. For me, it's a little wait and see but most likely will be switching to Google Search Console for tracking positions 20 to 100 and no longer reporting to clients on changes outside the top 20. Somebody else commented on that and said, we have only used Google Search Console for reporting. Over 20 years, I have found most clients could care less. The last one I'll share, for SEOs, the focus shifts even more towards, am I in the top 10? Since that's the only reliable data. It also reinforces Google's broader push towards AI overviews and SERP features, where even being number one doesn't guarantee visibility. I think that's a bit of an overstatement. I share this all the time, but Hrefs did a different study. This was months ago showing that AI overviews reduce click-through rate by 34.5%. That's a lot, but you're still getting clicks. And AI overviews are 99% triggered by informational keywords, not by purchase intent or transactional keywords. Anyway, this person says, in short, rank tracking just got less granular and strategy will have to rely more on traffic data, search console impressions and user engagement instead of deep position monitoring. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to I'm going to finish with what href said, which is this won't be the last curveball. And it won't be because Google could reverse this change, could reverse this change in a few weeks. I think it's too soon to tell, but this is huge news, had to be shared, had to be reported on. But I'm saying I think it's just too soon to tell what will happen. And it doesn't change the, the way to do great SEO. It doesn't really change the way to do great SEO. So that is everything that I got for you on this episode of The Edward Show. This is my daily digital marketing podcast. This is episode 809, 809 days in a row doing this podcast. No days missed. Somehow, no days missed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.